yeah, we're going to give it a service. Going to new oil, new filter, new transmission fluid, valve clearances, tighten head bolts, and all that stuff. And yeah, see if she runs mint still after. So the first step is to remove the air intake box. So that's 12 mm nut here, and a wing nut on top. Let's go that off. Now we can get to doing the cockpit stuff, which isn't really too complicated. We're gonna pull the locker cover off, and we're gonna tighten up all the head bolts. Or just re them to make sure we're still within spec, and then do all valve clearances. Yeah, so this is pretty much what a good condition valve engine should look like inside the valve cover. Um, no sludge build up, no milkiness from blown head gasket or anything, just yeah, not too bad. And it's not bad for a 32 year old engine. Um, see now let's go down and start talking up all the head bolts doing a spiral pattern. So one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. all the way out to the outside and then so I'll set the torque wrench, I think it's to 60 newton meters, but I was going to check the manual to make sure. Uh, and then yeah, I'll set all the valve clearances, I'll come back and show you how to do that. So I've checked all the head bolt torques. I uh, can't get to the back one here because the valve rocker arm is in the way, but they're all yeah, up at 60 newton meters. Um, did discover that there has been a slight oil leak at the back of the valve cover. And that is a fairly new gasket on there though, so I think I might just not have it quite tight enough down. But another important fact is do not over tighten your valve covers because that just is a really good way to make gaskets leak because you crush them. So it's going to be clean up right here. It wasn't a serious one, so I never lost any oil over an entire oil change period. So now I'll set to doing the valve clearances. So what you do for this is you set your engine to top dead center so that you have valves one, three, four, and five. Or well, it could be one, two, three, and five, I'm not too sure at the moment, because they've done like 10,000 Ks. And you set your intake exhaust um, intake valves to 0.2 millimeter clearance and your exhaust valves to 0.3 millimeter clearance. You have to do this when it's a hot engine, but if you do it when it's a cold engine, take off 0.07 millimeters from the clearances, so 0.13 and 0.23. And then you turn around 360 degrees to top of the center again. And then you do the remaining valves and then that's done. So I'll get to that now. So I'll just quickly do an um, example valve clearance setting to show you how to do it. So make sure your feel gauges are pretty much clean because they have to be pretty much exactly what they say on the thing. Um, I'll do an intake valve, so that's 0.203 millimeters. So you get the feeler gauge, and you fit it between the. No, oh, right one's already pretty much perfect. A little bit on the loose side, but you fit it between the rocker and the top of the valve. This one's a little bit on the loose side, so I'll just set it tighter. So what you do? Get your 12 mm spanner, screwdriver, and crack it down. Loosen it off. And you tighten it up, and you turn the screw slightly clockwise, and the other thing you turn it to the far. It can be quite a fiddly process, so that's slightly turned clockwise. So it's you still too tight, and then you have to remember when you tighten it up, and the stuff will move, and it will adjust the setting as well. So you need to check it once it's set, it's still way too tight. Fiddly, but after a couple of valves, you get used to it. And you can get through it really quickly after. Um, yeah, it's about perfect. Now you just want to have a nice sliding in and out. Um, with your valve clearances, you need to make sure they aren't too tight because if they are too tight, you do risk burning valves. Or, well, it's mainly with your exhaust valves you risk burning the valve because you need to have the amount of time that it contacts the cylinder head to be enough that the heat can be conducted out of the valve face. Um, Running them loose isn't really too bad, but it can wear your cam out a bit just from slapping and it's quite noisy. So I'll just go through and I'll set the rest of these and yeah. So now I'm just going to, um, now I've done the valve clearances, I'm going to tighten up all the manifold bolts. They're all 14mm heads and they have to be set to 30mm. Uh, I'm going to have to remove this shield because it just gets in the way of a couple of bolts. 
Um, I did tighten one up just before and it was a bit loose. So yeah, these engines are known for loosening their manifold bolts. So I'll go through into all of them and then I'll start it up and see how it sounds. And then I'll deal with doing the mixture adjustment on the carburetor, maybe clean a bit of this excess fuel off the carburetor, but I'm not going to be keeping the carburetor for long on this new leg, so I'm going to make a throttle body fuel injection system, so that will be one of my next big projects, which will be all videoed and documented on YouTube as well. Um, so I don't want to do too much with the carburetor, it still runs well, it's got electronic ignition, um, yeah, there's not really much to go wrong with this engine at all, so yeah, I'll get to it and I'll show you how it runs once I've done these servicing options. So I've adjusted all the valve clearances now, I've done all the manifold bolts. A couple of the manifold bolts were actually loose enough that they needed over an entire turn to get them to the right torque setting. Uh, put it all back together now. The engine is colder now because it's pretty much middle of winter. Um, so I'll turn it on and see how it runs. Should hopefully be a little bit quieter but all the valve clearances were all pretty much within spec when I started so see how it goes. As you can see it's shaking a bit, but that's just how these engines are when they're not warm. It's pretty much right on the sea on the gauge. Yeah, it's right down on the cold end of the spectrum. Um, sounds nice and quiet to me. Um, nice and responsive, no knocks or anything. Uh, so I guess I'll adjust the idle mix for a Screw it down here, what you do is you turn it in, screw it until you get to the point where the engine just starts to die. And we're back three quarters of the turn. So now the idle mixture has been set. The idle speed's already pretty much right, so there's not really much to diddle with there. Um, so I'll give it an oil change now and yeah, and then we'll get to the transmission. That's all. So I'll show you what's going into the engine today. I'm putting in, well for the transmission, got manual VMX ADW API GL4 grade oil. You want the GL4 for an older engine, uh, older transmission like this, mainly because the uh, new stuff is just too slippery for the synchronizers and they are notch you when they're cold. Other than that, it's like a brand new gearbox when it's warm. And for the engine, running Penrite Vantage Semi Synthetic 10W40 Full Zinc. You want the zinc in it because that's good for these old flat tappet cams. Um, it says modern engine on it, but I've been running this for the last 5,000 Ks without any issues at all. Um, don't listen to the manuals unless you're like or the book at the store. It says put 20W70 oil into it because that's way too thick unless your engine is actually pretty worn out and old. But this one's an almost new engine and. Filtering department, a genuine Toyota 90915, oh you can't read that, it's pretty blurry, 10,003 filter. Um, these are pretty expensive but you can usually get 20% off if you ask nicely. Um, yeah, so I'll get to it now, it's pretty simple, it's just a 18 or 17 millimeter bolt on the bottom of the engine. Dump it out into a tray. Pull the old filter off, put the new one on, after putting a bit of oil on the gasket seal of these, but these Toyota filters are actually pretty good because they come with a jelly, if you can even see it on the screen, that's type of jelly on the sealing ring, so that's actually pretty good so you don't really need oil, but it still says to oil it. Um, transmission is going to be a bit more difficult to get oil into because I've only got one funnel at the moment because usually I just run a funnel with an extended, like the neck of another funnel attached to it down into the side of the gearbox. Um, I'll see what I'll do about that. I'm not going to change the differential oil today because I did that back in November and that's all still good. Uh, all the brakes, I serviced them about a month ago so it's got all new fluids and new pads. Um, coolant's still good, changed that back in November and that's good for another few years. Uh, yeah, it's all pretty much simple for now. So this is the oil that came out of the engine, it's um, 
It's not bad. It's not really supposed to touch anything, is it? Anyway, I'll show you. It's not black. It's got no metal filings or anything. It. It's done only 5,000 kilometres, which is what 3,000 miles. Um, I just like to change my oil quite often. Um, this thing doesn't drink a drop between changes. It does, however, leak a couple of tiny drops out of the dipstick. But that's probably also related to the fact that I check the oil and record it every day before I drive it. Or every 500 kilometres, if I do more than 500 kilometres in a day, which I occasionally do. Um, also, another tip for with removing your oil filter for one of these. If you don't want to get oil all over your steering rack or the ground or anything, find an old cardboard box from yeah, your recycling bin or something and use that and put it underneath your oil filter and use that to guide the oil straight into one of these pans. So I'll do that now and then I'll fill up new oil and see how it goes. So I've filled it with oil. Um, now it's gonna it's got a new filter, so I'm gonna turn it on. It's gonna have a rapidly timing chain for a couple of seconds, that's just how it works. So it's important to not rev it too high before the oil pressure builds up because that's a good way to destroy an engine. Uh, so I'll let it build up oil pressure and check the oil level again. I'll have to add a bit more, but let's see how it goes. So it's built up oil pressure and it's running nicely now. Um, I'll let it drain back down to the sump for the next four or five minutes and check the oil over again. I think I'll have to add, probably add a couple hundred mils. I usually do run the dipstick at, or run with enough oil that the dipstick's got about two or three mils over the full line. That's just how it is for some reason with me. Um, it doesn't do any damage to the engine until it's way over the full line. Um, yeah, I'll set to doing the gearbox oil now and then we'll be pretty much done for the service. So I've just drained out the gearbox oil and put new oil in. Haven't taken a close look at the old oil yet. It wasn't too bad, but uh, has done about 25,000 k's or so, or 20,000 k's on the old oil. Um, and had a new set of bearings as well in the gearbox with that same oil. Um, so it's due for a change. I uh, found the use for old bike tyre tubes. They hold funnels in place and they also work as perfect funnel extensions into the gearbox. So that's pro tip number of whatever. Um, we have to add a bit more oil to the engine I'll assume now. It's, yeah, it's about a millimetre probably out below the full line. So yeah, the, just a summary, the gearbox holds 2.5 litres of oil and the engine holds 3.2-ish, 3 litres of oil. Um, so in quarts there will be 2.6-ish and about, I don't know, three and a half quarts. Um, yeah, it's pretty much a complete service and the engine should run quite well now and I'll keep you guys updated if the synchronizers have stopped being notchy and difficult to get into gear at low temperatures. Uh, it'll probably take a week or two for all the previous additives and stabilizers and layers that the old oil deposits on the synchronizers to wear off um, but after that it should be good yeah you just don't really want the modern GL5 spec oil as it, it's just a bit too slippery for these gearboxes when they need a bit of grip for the synchronizers to work in the cold but it's not too bad it's got 80,000 Ks on this car now um, so that's about 45,000 miles or so I'd assume it's pretty good condition engine, runs well, doesn't burn any oil. It's all really, and yeah. So 
So I just took a look at the um, old gearbox oil and there was a fair bit of brass filings in there which would be from the synchronizer rings and I'd say that is quite likely related to the wrong oil that I had in it before because I had just yeah ADW90 GL5 spec oil so I'll see how this ADW GL4 spec oil works um, I'll keep you guys updated but I'll just give you a quick walk around in the car just to give any of you guys who are interested in it so it's a um, 1983 Toyota Starlet KP61 Sprint it's uh, got yeah 82,000 K's on it it's in pretty good general condition um, it's got the Sprint alloys uh, yeah, it's all fairly tidy. It's a bit dirty at the moment because I haven't cleaned it in the last few weeks. Um, not sure how blurry this video will be because the focal length for this camera is like manual. Just I could try and fiddle with it like this, but it'll just end up making a mess. Um, yeah, I'll try and make more videos, especially soon when I start working on this project for fuel injection it's going to be using a micro squirt ECU I'm going to have to do quite a bit of drawing and solid works and I'm going to have to decide whether I'm going to do some 3D printing of the manifold, well not manifold, the fuel system components and then getting them investment cast or if I'm just going to machine them out of solid blocks of aluminium it's going to be a bit of just do some optimization and stuff and see what's going to be most cost effective and time effective um, yeah thank you for watching